Dot resolve system in Total War Warhammer 3. Both Rounds of Chaos and Immortal Empires, also if you want to count Old World as part of that. Dot resolve is one of the biggest problems in the game. On top of sieges, on top of the poor balancing that we see in many parts of the game. The odd resolve doesn't just affect the player, it affects the AI as well. Because the AI is always going to odd resolve battles against other AI factions. You might be able to fight and avoid uh, terrible losses, but the AI obviously is not going to do so. And so, you're going to end up in campaign situations that are going to be determined by how well a faction does in terms of auto resolve. And certain factions do substantially better with respect to dot resolve than others. But what is important with dot resolve? Well, I've played a lot of Warhammer 3. Here's the best I could figure out with regards to dot resolve, and it's not necessarily going to be a complete list. But things like your general level, your hero level, if you have a lot of heroes in, a, in an army, the experience of the units, overall experience of the army, the size of the army, do matter quite a good amount. However, it's not just that. In fact, all of these things that I just mentioned matter in quite a few ways significantly less than something else that the auto resolve does care a great deal about. The auto resolve seems to operate on a damage model. You'll go into a battle and the, the auto resolve will calculate how much damage you're going to take in that battle. And that damage will be reduced by the armor of your units. This is one of the reasons why Warriors of Chaos are such a powerful race. Because Warriors of Chaos, with the Warriors themselves, have a roster of units that are incredibly well armored. And as a result of that, they can do very well in Auto Resolve. Auto Resolve also presents a benefit, though there's also negatives with respect to this but it presents a significant benefit. If you're auto-resolving a battle on the field, on the campaign map, as opposed to a settlement, but if you're auto-resolving on the field, the army will be destroyed. Whereas, obviously, if you fight it manually, the army can get away. There are some exceptions to this rule, typically with the Vampire Counts, Coast, to some extent, Tomb Kings, but really, there's only that exception with some undead factions which might be able to recover from the battle. But for the most part, for the vast majority of factions or during lords in the game, when you want to resolve a battle, you are completely eliminating an army, which in itself can be considered a significant benefit, provided you can win. However, there's also significant downsides, especially if you want to have a great campaign experience. The auto resolve result is determined by the battle difficulty. Now, I personally think that this is a ridiculous system that Creative Assembly should remove. Because battle difficulty, I'm not sure if it's because of the auto resolve or it's because just the battle difficulty itself. Possibly combination of both, possibly just the auto resolve. But the battle difficulty does determine AI aggression on the campaign map. It will screw you over in terms of the auto resolve result. But, while it will worsen things in terms of your AR result, it will also make the AI more aggressive. Which means the AI is going to attack more, it's going to seize more territory, more. Plenty of people have complained in Warhammer 3 about how passive the AI can be on the campaign map. Well, if you just play on very hard battle difficulty, it doesn't matter what campaign difficulty, I've chosen very hard for the purposes of this video, just so I don't get deal with auto saves a legendary slowing down my computer. But if you play on very hard battle difficulty, regardless of which campaign difficulty you're playing on, normal, hard, very hard, or even easy, you will get an AI that's generally going to use the resources it has better on the campaign map, but it still has problems because of that. Having an auto-resolve system that's tied so heavily to armor to a lesser extent leadership means that factions that have low level of armor on their units, think of Skaven for instance, not only will you have to fight more battles manually, but on top of that, I'm pretty sure that the AI knows what its chances are going to be in auto-resolve, 
So they're going to go, they're going to, uh, factions are possibly going to be more aggressive towards you on the campaign map if, uh, or against settlements where they think they have a chance to win. That's why this matters. I think tying into an armor in a game like Warhammer is honestly ridiculous. I, honestly, tying into armor in any game is ridiculous. Especially since it values armor so much. It's a damage model. Total War Pharaoh, for all the issues it has, actually handled this generally better, though not necessarily all that much. Like, I would say, like, you could play a campaign in Total War Pharaoh and avoid a bunch of the smaller combats that are honestly inconsequential. Like, consider this army. There's no chance a garrison over here of nine units here of, like, blue horrors is going to stop Bellacor. I mean, Bellacor could probably solo that entire freaking garrison on his own. That isn't necessarily an exaggeration. He likely could. But let's take a look what happens. So we can easily out-resolve this particular battle. No problem. Because even though I do have an out-resolve disadvantage, and that is a, a keeper... Uh, or, sorry, Lord of Change, even though that is a Lord of Change, I have such a substantial advantage in numbers and armor uh, versus the crap they have that, yeah, I do get a decisive victory. But then let's go to the garrison. The garrison that is genuinely weaker to deal with because that Lord of Change is actually more dangerous than this entire freaking garrison to deal with. Medium casualties. Sure, I've taken some damage from the battle before, but there is no situation in which this garrison is going to be able to inflict 400 losses. If I fought this battle manually, and this is not a joke, I will lose maybe at most 100. Likely far less than that. Depends on how willing I was, uh, uh, how willing I was to get Bellacor dirty, <laughs> dirty his hands in this particular scenario and that's why it's ridiculous with the Auto resolve system though what's playing out over there is not because of armor because i did have the armor advantage against the enemy rather what's playing out over there is another thing that's a genuine issue you want to understand why the ai is less aggressive if you play on lower difficulties because every settlement in this game has an auto resolve benefit it doesn't matter if it's in your control, AI control. Every settlement, minor settlement, major settlement, every settlement has an AR benefit. The army that's in the settlement, as long as it's full strength, doesn't matter. So when I will go against this particular army next turn, in fact, I will just go over, uh, over there. Um, maybe it would, let's see if I can actually, I can't necessarily, yeah, should be able to see. But when I will go over there next turn, I am liable to take more damage as well. And keep in mind, this was a walled settlement with a pretty pathetic garrison all the same, but a walled settlement. This settlement is not walled. This settlement has no walls, an even more pathetic garrison, and it still will be able to inflict a good amount of damage on my army. This is why this system is ridiculous. Now, some people are going to comment. It's like, oh, what? You just want to resolve my way, your way for a campaign? Well, first off, I do believe that if you know how to build your armies properly on the campaign map, then yes, you should be able. If you've got a dominant campaign position and you've got Bellacor and a powerful army, you shouldn't be stopped by a freaking garrison. Because no garrison is going to stop that. This is also something the player uses to its advantage. So it's not like, oh, it's just uh, to the player's advantage to make us. No, it's actually to the player's advantage in some ways, if you're willing to tolerate this crap, to fight these battles manually. Because you can obviously take significantly less damage. A hundred men. Okay, not quite 400, but still a hundred too many. Now, to be fair in that case, we do, did have a lord, but all the same and subjugate that. You end up dealing with this crappy system time and again throughout the course of your campaign. It doesn't stop. It is always going to be a, a neck. Uh, it is always going to be a necktie 
that you're gonna have to deal with on any difficulty. To understand the actual results I get in battles on Legendary, because I've played a lot of Legendary. This is just very hard for demonstration purposes because auto save would um, slow down my video, like impact performance, there would be stuttering due to the auto saves. But I've played a lot of Legendary. The actual result of battles that I get in a campaign are not the results I get on very hard. Rather, they're the results I get, typically speaking, on easy. I'm not joking. In fact, I may get better results dependent on the faction, the lore that I'm playing. I may get better results in a battle than easy. That's... And, and I'm not a great battle player. Yes, I know a lot about the campaign. I talk a lot about campaign. I focus a lot on the campaign. From my perspective, the battles don't matter. You go into a battle having already won it. Very rarely do I have battles where the outcome is in, you know, uncertain. Sometimes I may go into a battle that I might believe I'll lose and I'll try and pull out a win, but I'm not like Legend of Total War. That's the difference. Legend of Total War is someone who would pull out a win out of his ass in an impossible situation. I just don't care about that. I care about winning a battle before it even happens. That's how I play the game. So for me, the battle is the actual tactic strategy. I mean, there's some fun moments, sure, when like you deal with Grimgor or some other people and you're trying desperately to figure out the way. But most battles aren't necessarily going to require a lot of tactical depth uh, from you to win, because most battles will have a predetermined outcome. Sometimes the AI does surprise you, or sometimes the Skaven just end up being annoying, or the Ogres end up being more powerful because you forgot you turned on a mod and made them significantly more powerful. I've never had that happen to me. But most of the time, battles are predetermined. And I don't care what anyone says, you should not have an auto-resolve situation in a game where a fucking crap tier garrison inflicts more damage. In this case, look at the situation. I fought two battle, uh, three battles here. Out of those three, two of them had the Lord leading them, which was significantly more dangerous than otherwise would have been. The other one was this settlement. It should not be that a crappy settlement garrison with no leader behind it should inflict more damage, significantly twice the damage than I would suffer on the actual field of battle. That's not how battles work. It's so unrealistic, so uncertain. The problem is, this also affects other AI factions. I stress this out. This affects other AI faction. A lot of people tend to ignore this aspect. They think about like, oh, I don't have to play a battle or I have to play a battle. Well, the AI always has to auto-resolve a battle. And so this kind of situation, where every single settlement type offers a crappy uh, garrison a defensive advantage is just ridiculous. The reason it's ridiculous is because you might have a highly experienced army with a high tier general that the general alone could win that battle if you fought it manually, but you might lose half your army, especially if it's like a tier 4 settlement or something like that. Like you take Nakari or, uh, or Belakor or Archeon and even a few others or Scarbrand in a settlement, they'll win the battles on their own against the typical garrison, unless they have the garrison building. But if you auto resolve, you may end up losing half your fucking army. Which isn't great in that situation. Pushes you to fight a bunch of these crappy battles which are not interesting. But here's the kicker in all of this. The battles that are actually meaningful, the battles that are difficult, the battles where you might actually have to use a genuine tactics and think about how you're positioning your army on the campaign map, maybe laying out an ambush. The field battles, well, they don't have that auto resolve benefit. So, the screwed up situation with auto resolve is that you end up in a situation where you might, where the most meaningful battles are the ones that are easiest to auto resolve. Yes, easiest. Unless there's reinforcing armies in range and there's ways to manipulate the situation on a campaign map to prevent that, but unless there's reinforcement armies in range of one army, it is very easy against incredibly powerful legendary lords with full armies, full regiments around, high experience, to just auto-resolve. It can be so disappointing, for instance, to invade the Chaos Wasteland 
have to fight the bunch of crappy garrison battles manually because that will reduce your casualties and then you meet Archeon with a massive army behind them and you just press a fucking button and win that way. That is incredibly disappointing. You might say, oh, you could have chosen to fight the battle. Okay, but the screwed up aspect about that is this. You'll always take damage in those battles. Far more damage than you take against these crappy garrisons, against crappy armies. You would take a significant amount of damage. So reality, the auto-resolve result that you get in those battles can be better than the result you would get in a manual bell. So th that's really fucked up from my perspective. The reason it's so fucked up is because you end up in a situation where the best thing to do in your campaign, and this is genuinely the best way to play, is if you cannot resolve a field battle against a powerful army, powerful legendary lord that would inflict severe damage on your army, do so. You might actually end up taking less damage if you can win. Even if it's a pure victory. If you can win, if you can achieve a result, okay. If you lose, well, chances are you're going to have to pull a rabbit out of the hat in order to win that battle from a tactical level. But, so it's best to hunt resolve a lot of field battles and best to manual fight every single siege and settlement battle in the game. I don't care how people play the game. I don't care what they like or dislike. That's messed up. That is the exact opposite of how this system should work. One of the problems with all of this is you have these garrisons. They have a couple of units in them, right? You have these garrisons for settlements. You show up with 20 units. The numbers you have don't matter. The rank of your lords, the heroes, they do matter. The experience they have do, does matter. The number of units matters less. You'll still take damage. But the rank of lords, experience, all that does matter. A significant amount, actually. But the, mo the fact that the most thing that matters is, oh, it's a settlement, so significant AI score, far above anything else in the game. And two, the armor of units. You bring an, ar an army of uh, units with 100 armor, you cannot resolve your way for the fucking entire fucking game. It's settlements notwithstanding. You'll take significantly less damage than playing with Skaven. It makes certain campaigns such... <laughs> So, so, such horrible messes to play because there's races with very low armor that have incredibly powerful armies. You can say what you will about the Skaven. No one can genuinely argue that the Skaven don't have an incredibly powerful army. They have one of the most powerful army rosters in the game, but oh, they just don't have high levels of armor. And this affects the Skaven as well on the campaign map. You want to know why the Skaven don't end up being a major threat on the campaign map if you're playing on Legendary? It's because they end up losing against factions. You want to know why Snitch, who's so devastating on his fucking own that he can brutalize entire armies? Like, I was not terrified in Warhammer 2 of many things, but I was terrified of fighting Snitch on the campaign map because I knew what he would pull what armies he would create. But Cafe ends up dominating against Snitch on Legendary, assuming no mods, assuming Legendary difficulty very hard. Okay, the reason uh, Cafe ends up dominating Snitch is because Cafe has armies with Jade Warriors that have 80 armor by default, which is more than pretty much the entire freaking Skaven roster with the exception of a couple of units. There's your problem right there. It's such a screwed up balance system with respect to Autoresolve. And it needs to be changed. Another thing is special abilities. Think of Ekeklaw's nukes as an example. Magic, other special abilities. They don't get reflected at all or very little in terms of the auto-resolve result. I mean, having spells unlocked in an army will affect it, I think. But not the types of spells. There are some spells, some abilities that would devastate your army. You get the nuke dropped on your ass by Ekeklaw in a manual battle. Yeah. You might lose half your army in a single go if you're not careful. You have to be careful. You have to be clever. But that does, shit doesn't matter in a manual battle. Nakari. Another example is Nakari. Like, just consider Nakari. Poor ass Nakari. In, in a campaign. Nakari. And his yes. army, or her army, its armies of devastating flankers with very high damage dealing capabilities and very high speed is incredibly brutal to beat in a, in a battle 
manual bell. But the, an Akari is also incredibly easy in a lot of ways to defeat for the auto resolve. That's where it's fucked up. That's where the system just flat out doesn't work. This armor, this armor focus system, settlement focus system, that is just, I'm not sure what Creative Assembly was think, uh, thinking about this. And inevitably, a lot of people are just going to say, oh, you just want to auto-resolve your way through a campaign. No, I want the battles that I fight in a campaign, the ones I fight manually, to be meaningful battles, important battles against attacks. I do not want to fight the, a thousand, no, a thousand would be too, too little, the 10,000 siege and settlement battle in, that are crap. They are crap. Like, that's one of the problems with sieges, by the way. This this is why our resolve is so important, because sieges themselves, you know, once every while could be okay. It's one of the reasons I like Old World, because you get far fewer sieges to fight every single bloody turn, um, just because of the way the map is spread out. But when you're constantly, every turn, fighting siege after siege after siege after siege, it amplifies how awful they are. Now, they would still be awful, but it would be less of an issue. Also consider this, let's say in a single turn, you're fighting at one point in a campaign, you can fight 10 battles in a turn. If you fight those battles manually, as you should, because it's the best result for settlements and sieges, less so for tactical battles, but even then, you, in many tactical battles, you will get a better result. You're going to spend one or two minutes going in for the loading time, and that's on an NVMe drive. With a good CPU, good GPU. On a top-end computer. Many people don't have a computer that I do. But on my computer, it takes one or two minutes. Let's say one and a half. So it'll take three minutes total to get in, to get out. Three minutes, ten battles. So I'm going to spend half an hour of my life in a single turn if I'm fighting ten battles just to enter and exit battles, many of which are not going to be that interesting because of this system. This is what needs to be changed. Not... Like, I understand, ba racial balancing, gate guard for cafe, all that, should have to change in its entirety. That is important. But the fundamentals of a game are just as important, if not more so, far more so. Costin, signing out.